Okay, in this problem, we're going to introduce the concept of nominal and effective interest rates. This is one of the most important concepts you need to learn early on in engineering, economics, or finance. So please take a moment, read the problem. It's quite similar to the previous problem on compound interest with a little twist. And when you're ready, come back and we'll go through the solution. Okay, so as you can see in this problem, it's more or less the same problem we saw last time with an investment of $500 and interest earned at 6%. However, if you read the problem carefully, you'll notice that it says something a little bit different after the 6%. It has the term 6% compounded quarterly. 6% compounded quarterly. What does this mean? Does this mean that we calculate 6% every quarter? No, it doesn't. It's a very commonly made mistake. This is a terminology that's very specific to finance that you need to learn in this course. 6% compounded quarterly actually means we take 6% and we divide by 4. Don't make it any more complicated than that. For the moment, try not to worry too much about exactly why we do it this way. Um, just focus on this as a procedure. If we have different compounding periods, so compounded monthly, if it was compounded monthly, we'd divide by 12. If it was compounded daily, we divide by 365. The important thing to realize is that the 6% is something very specific we refer to as the nominal interest rate. And the nominal interest rate is really just the starting point for where we develop the numbers that we need to do the time value of money calculations. It's not the number that we'll use in the calculations itself. The other important thing to realize about a nominal interest rate is that 99 times out of 100, when we talk about an interest rate, we're talking about a period of a year. So even when you lis listen to the radio, you hear the announcer talk about something like the inflation rate He'll say something like the inflation rate last month was 1.5%. He actually doesn't mean it was 1.5% for that month. He's talking about a 1.5% equivalent yearly rate. And when we talk about interest rates in finance and engineering economics, we're almost always talking about a yearly rate. The nominal interest rate refers to that sort of interest rate we're quoting for that year and the number of compounding periods is how we'll actually do the calculations. So if we look at this example, we'll say a 6% compounded yearly, uh, we'll take 6% divide by 4, that actually will give us a value of um, 0.015 or 1.5%. You might say, okay, well now, what do we do with this 1.5% if we'd like to go back to the problem and solve for the value of, the future value of this investment? So recall, previously, our P was $500, our I was 6%, and our N was 3. That was in the regular 6% compounded annually version of this problem. But now, because we know something about nominal interest rates, we know we have to convert the I to I equals 1.5%. If the I equals 1.5%, that means we also have to convert the N. We have to convert the N not to years, but now to quarters, because the interest rate we're going to use in the calculation is a quarterly interest rate. So to convert three years into quarters, we'll just multiply by four. So now our N is equal to 12. The amount of the original investment doesn't change. It's still 500. 
But now if I write this problem, I'll write it like this. So my, sorry, my f is equal to p times 1 plus i to the n, or in this case, 500 times 1 plus 0 0.015 to the power of 12. I could also write this in that special notation that we talked about where I can refer to the p multiplied by some compound interest factor. We'll call this the f given p because f is what we're looking for, p is what we're given i and n, and in this type of notation, I would write it as 500 times f given p 0 0.015, or you could write 1.5% there, and 12. And if you work out what this equals, you can do it either by the formula or, either, or using the compound interest table, uh, you should end up with a value of $597.81. That's if I use the formula. Uh, if I use the compound interest table, because it doesn't have as many places after the decimal as I will get from the formula itself, I actually end up with 598, but close enough for our purposes. Recall that when we did the problem with 6% compounded yearly, that value was 595.5. So you can see the effect of compounding more frequently, we actually get a higher future value of the investment. Okay, so if I go back for a second to this concept of a quarterly rate that's calculated from my nominal yearly rate, and I notice that my new value of 595.81 is larger than my 595.5 that I got when I did the problem just with a 6% compounded yearly, then I should realize that there's a concept here related to something we call effective interest rate. And if I want to calculate the effective yearly rate of a 6% nominal compounded quarterly, I can go back to my quarterly interest rate and I can say, well, 1 plus i, in this case, my quarterly rate, raised to the power of 4, because there's 4 quarters, minus 1, to get rid of the 1 that we added uh, initially so that we could do the compounding, this will actually give us the effective interest rate. And if you do this math, you'll see that the effective interest rate for a 6% nominal rate compounded quarterly is actually more than 6%. It's 6.136%. This is the effective interest rate. This is the nominal interest rate. Please make sure that you understand the difference between the two. If I move over here for a second, I'd like to introduce the formulas that we use when we do interest rate calculations, especially when we do um, uh, a lot of calculations relating different compounding interest rates and different types of nominal rates. If I, um, if I write the formula for the effective interest rate, I, I could write it like this, in a general terms, I could say that the effective interest rate um, is equal to 1 plus i, so 1 plus i, well, in fact, I'll write this one. I want to put my 1.5% um, my here, and if I write it in general terms, we'll write it as the nominal rate, which I'll call r, divided by the number of compounding periods in the problem. So this particular problem, compounded quarterly, we divided by four. So we had four compounding periods in the yearly nominal interest rate. And then I raised it to the power of m, 
when I did this calculation in order to calculate the effective interest rate. And then I subtracted one to turn it into uh, this number. So I've actually worked backwards. I've used the example first to illustrate the idea. And then if we go back and construct what the formula would look like, we end up with something like this. So what is important in this formula is that you remember that the R in the formula is the nominal rate and the M in the formula is the number of compounding periods in the year. So this becomes an important formula and we use this quite a lot. You'll also find this uh, on the inside front cover of most uh, engineering economics textbooks.